Make my podcast. Who doesn't love a movie about good old Saint Nick? Oh, this is a movie about Uncle Nick? Well, I guess it's too late to change the episode now. Let's cover Twas the Night this week on Wreck My Disney Channel Original Movie. Wreck My Podcast! Welcome to Wreck My Podcast, where this week we got a smaller crew than normal. I'm here with one guest. He's got that mama's kitchen discipline. It's Joe. Do you think a tan will make me look thinner? Yes, I do. I think <laughs> I think a tan will make you look thinner. I think <laughs> you know when the, when the dude said the mama's kitchen discipline, I was like, should I be calling child services? What is what is happening here? <laughs> what is that? What is that even? Um, and then the I'm wooden your, spoon. Yeah, seriously. And then I'm your host. They call me Lappy down at the Velvet Rabbit. I'm Jordan. Um, <laughs> so we have a small small podcast this week but hey we're, yeah. we're getting it done and this is this i would say this is like a small movie this is, if we're gonna do a movie where we're only gonna have two of us on it's this movie it's an hour and a half movie yeah it's not it's if not even right. also if even that also so it's a disney channel original movie i think a lot of people aren't gonna know twas the night because when i was thinking back to disney channel original movies and christmas themed ones i was trying to think okay ultimate christmas present i get think yep, of the one, one where they like make it snow in, in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. And then the other, and then, so I couldn't think of another one. And I realized I never watched this one when I was young. This is my first viewing experience. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never seen this one. And then I also went and looked it up and I realized that almost never does Disney channel original movies have a one in December. The only two technical Christmas movies. Well, there's three, but the two Christmas movies of the time we were watching was Ultimate Christmas Ultimate Present, Christmas present and, and Twas, Twas the, the Night. Night. And then, like, in 2007, they had Good Luck Charlie Christmas something or other, which is a uh, show I don't even know what it is yeah, about. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, how funny is that? That, like, every month they have a Disney Channel original movie, and then December hits, and we're like, meh. <laughs> we don't, yeah. We don't want one. <laughs> you know, I definitely remember Twas the Night, though, and I remember loving it as a kid. Yeah, I don't I know it was how... Fun. I don't know how this one never got on my radar because I was watching this. I'm like, I don't remember a single moment of this one. So it must not. I must have just never watched it. But I know this must was the not. time I was watching because like uh, Motocross came out around right. this time. Yeah. So I watched. This is the peak Disney Channel original movies right here. Exactly. So it's not like this was like too late for me or something. But I don't know. Anyway, if you've never seen this movie or even heard of it, we're going to do a little Jordan Explains the Movie right here and give you the lowdown of what happens in this movie. Oh, yes, it's time for Jordan to explain the movie quickly. Uncle Nick is a con artist who nephew Dan idolizes. Well, Nick is in some financial trouble, so he goes to Dan's house to hide from his collectors. Dan's parents get called into an emergency, so now Nick is watching Dan and his siblings on Christmas Eve. Nick uses a virus on his computer, and it crashes Santa's sleigh, who I guess is driving a Tesla now. But because Santa is such a klutz, he knocks himself out. Nick decides to take on the role of Santa to help get some money he needs to satisfy his collectors. He makes Dan believe they are trying to help Santa deliver toys, but he's actually stealing things in the process. When Dan finds out, he leaves Nick and goes back home to actually help Santa. Nick is going to skip town, but sees his collectors going to his family's house, so he decides to save his family Familer, family over having nice stuff. He stops the collectors and gives all the stuff back so he can be with his family again. What a moral. Okay, so in Disney Channel original movie uh, lore, well, yeah, like I guess like standings, <laughs> where would you put this one? Because, you know, we've covered things like Brink and Johnny Tsunami and we like love those ones. But where would you put this one in the ranking? Because... If I were to put all of them in a ranking, even the ones that I've never even seen before, which are going to be at the bottom, this one's going to be somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I would say this is <laughs> going to be like lower middle side for me. Yeah, it's They're, OK. Yeah, it's not and, great. 
I could see how if it was like the nostalgia factor might bump it up a little bit. But, but since... I had the nostalgia factor and I didn't even think it was like I kind of got bored watching it, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty boring, but it does have a lot of things that made me start thinking as we went along in this one. So like my the first thought I had was like, oh, Brian Cranston, <laughs> how yeah. far you've come <laughs> from like <laughs> what you were doing back then to what you're doing now. Uh, but it made me wonder, like, why is every in every 2000s, early 2000s, 90s movie to show that someone is like laid back? They're wearing like a Hawaiian shirt yep. and like a choker puka necklace or something. <laughs> well, and it's also the times. <laughs> yeah. Because this yeah. book came out 2001. 2001. Yeah. Puka shell necklaces, all the rage in the 90s. All the rage. <laughs> um, part of the times, but you're absolutely right. They're always displayed with the Hawaiian shirt that's open. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that always cracked me up. But then I was watching and like the people who were after him first off reminded me of like a reject bulk and skull from Power Rangers because like anytime they were around, it would play like a like the really stupid music. Yeah. And they were just like over the top and crazy and like, you know, like it was just unbelievable. And also they had like an enforcer, right? Like, yeah. this is he like part of their company? Yeah, I don't know what he was supposed to be like, what he is a friend Idiots. or they hired him or what the heck. But it's this big enforcer dude and he looks like Samoan or something, right? And oh, you think, definitely. You think he's going to like have this menacing voice when he talks, but then he starts talking and he sounds like me. <laughs> and I'm just like, that, yeah, is he not does. Inti- that is not intimidating one bit. <laughs> he is a big dude. He was a huge dude that they made him tiny later. Um, so <laughs> I was cracking up because... Brian Cranston's character is like running away from these guys at one point. Right. And he like goes into a bathroom to hide and he realizes that there is a guy dressed as Santa in the stall going to the bathroom and he's going to steal Santa's uh, uh, outfit to like get past these people. <laughs> Very easy to pull off the shoes, pants was, and everything. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They weren't even pants. He grabs the shoes from under the stall and, and, like pulls attached. Them off, and it's attached. The pants are literally stockings to boots and i'm like does this guy not is this guy i imagine this guy is wearing a like leotard like an 80s woman's workout outfit stockings connected to the boots that go all the way up and connect to the leotard <laughs> like, this See, is how... i i think he's uh very much into his character so i think mm-hmm. under the santa suit he had the classic white boxers with the red dots Oh, yes, yes. The polka dot boxers, of course. <laughs> not not as good as the boxers with the hearts on them. <laughs> That's real right. classic. That's for Cupid. He He's wearing those. Yeah. <laughs> um, so no, Santa but, still has to deal with naughty boys. Exactly, exactly. But I just thought that was so weird where I'm like, Without I've never seen them. I've never, yeah uh, did that not remind you when i when santa was like tickling the naughty boys i was like this reminds me of uh in the office when daryl is explaining to michael scott what they do in gangs he's like yeah we get, it's called fluffy fingers we tickle yeah. each other <laughs> i didn't even put the two together but you're absolutely right oh, it was cracking me up i loved it so yeah i thought that was so weird when he pulled those boots off and the pa- like the pants stockings were connected i'm like what is this guy's outfit? Like, this is so weird. It's like the magician trick where like they're pulling out the, uh, the, the handkerchief and it just keeps going. And then there's exactly. boxers at the end. Exactly. It's the same exact thing. Uh, so, um, I thought it was funny too, because Brian Cranston's character, Nick, he, he uses a virus at one point, which I guess is just like a shortcut icon on his computer. Yeah, you just drag it over to whatever application yeah, you just want to, destroy i guess yeah because that's how viruses work 50 computers and or every computer in a 50 mile radius too well that's what i was like uh i don't think viruses work in a proximity basis (laughs) like it's not just like oh every computer in 50 miles is not also if every computer in 50 miles is affected i'm like you're kind of um an evil person because there's probably a hospital close by that you've just now like destroyed their department fire department yeah on christmas eve (laughs) the electric power grid i'm pretty sure that's all based on computers exactly Exactly. So I'm like, uh, this is not computing. All, all the traffic lights just crash. Everything. Yep. It's just mayhem. <laughs> it's craziness. So the virus was like what super that, what funny. What that would what that would be like is uh, in the video game Watch Dogs, where he hits the virus on a, his cell mm-hmm. phone and all the power in the area goes out. Yes, that's true. That's true. But that's not really a virus. That's more like, I guess that is. I don't know. 
No, it's Do, like hacking and then crashing a system or something. I think you, you know I guess what you can uh, call that a virus. Not well, really. hack, hackers. All you hackers that listen to us, write in, write in, hackers. Let us yeah. know. Can you do a proximity was, was virus? Was the night a- accurate? Yeah, how accurate is that? Uh, so, um, Santa has this little mechanism, right? This little like ball. Yeah, and a I little was a ornament. Little, I was a little confused. Does it stop time or does it freeze people? I think it stops time because I think it even stops like animals. Okay. But people, it, it's it's a little flawed because the people kind of still like move a little bit. Well, that's the thing I was <laughs> wondering too. I was like, so were you guys trying to cut budget here by just being like, hey, all the actors just stand really just, still. Yeah, just don't move. Because it was so blatant that they were still like. Like, yeah, trying, trying to hold themselves still. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, it's not that hard. I could do it in two seconds. Just uh, freeze frame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not difficult. It's not very difficult to uh, do this. I mean, come on, Disney Channel. But yeah, I was confused. I was like, is he is he paralyzing the people or is he actually stopping time? Because if he's stopping time, that then brings up the question of the whole world is stopped then, right? So what happens if Santa accidentally hits the stop button, then dies? <laughs> no one's there to hit the button to start time again. Are we all just in suspended reality ass- forever? I would assume an elf would come. But how is the, the elf? Uh, is the elf not like part of the well, time? Well, stop? the sleigh. Maybe the North Pole is exempt. Maybe, but then that begs the question: Then do elves? Be- uh, well, no, age no, because faster? he was able to talk to an elf when he stopped time. Okay, so we're saying that the North Pole is this magical area that's outside of uh, the space-time continuum. A different dimension. Okay, a, a alternate universe, a pocket dimension within our dimension. Yes. Okay. North okay. Pole. <laughs> I just. Jack Skellington is in a different one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. I just want to. <laughs> I want to clear the 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 whole like the the technical side of this movie <laughs> towards the yeah. night. Make sure we're all on the same page here. Um, all right, so yeah, how do you I, ke- I was always wondering how they kept all the buttons on that ornament straight. Like, which one stops time? Which one makes turns you into particles back to the sleigh? Which one well, makes things grow and make things shrink? Well, this also, is how essentially does it know what to shrink and what to make bigger. Exactly, this was like essentially like pin particles, right? But like, I, yeah, it was like this big. It was, so it's like an RFID system, right? It's like a laser pointer, but like yeah. it's not very accurate because it's just a giant laser. Yeah, a giant light right on the front. So then I guess is this an intuitive AI interface that knows, like it can read your intention and know oh. what you want? Roomba wants to talk. Oh, you have a Roomba talking to you, huh? It's like, hey, hey, uh, stop talking about AI over there. Yeah, <laughs> Roomba seriously. hears. Ro- Roomba got offended. <laughs> yeah, he was like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> he was like, uh, before you start bashing AI, put me on the charger. Yeah, put me on the charger right now. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to beat this guy up. I need all my strength. <laughs> I thought this movie was like clock stoppers. Do you remember that movie? Of course I remember clock stoppers. Yeah. It was like Santa meets clock stoppers. Like they the did Santa time Claus. stopping way better. Oh, totally. They did time stopping way better in that. Actually what this movie is, it is the kid friendly Disney channel version of bad Santa. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Because Nick, Uncle Nick is kind of like the bad Santa uh, like character. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. That's true. Also, um, just when, without the cursing and sex. Yeah, because you know Brian Cranston, he's a family man who cooks meth. Yeah, yeah. and he has Hawaiian shirts, and they don't and he do has that. Hawaiian shirts. That's how you know a guy is shady, right? When he's wearing the Hawaiian shirts, you always know it. Um, so. I, I also have I also realized this too. I know I'm like dissecting this thing. It's a Disney Channel original movie, but this is where my brain goes when I'm watching a movie, right? So right. Santa earlier in in the movie, he makes it known that in this universe he can see all the bad things and good things you've done. He's like, oh, this guy has done this, this, and this. I know this he person. Closes this, his eyes, he meditates, and then he it all comes to him. Yes, he gets enlightened. So when Nick and Danny take the stuff why can't he just see where they are because they're doing a bad thing and he should be able to see when they're doing a bad thing interesting or does he you know what maybe he just maybe he doesn't intuitively know whether or not it's a bad thing 
Maybe he's just memorized the list after reading it twice. Oh, so like the list is like a sentient list that it fills itself out when things happen. So technically Santa Claus. He has to keep Claus, referring to it, but he has like a photographic memory. So maybe, maybe we've never thought of this before. We always say, man, Santa Claus knows what you're doing. You better watch out. You better not pout. Like Santa Claus list. is coming to town. It's the list. The list is the thing that's watching you yeah. and, and doing it. Maybe we need it's to like be the more sorting scared. hat exactly oh man maybe we've been the songs are all wrong santa is just I a think really smart are. guy who can remember a lot of stuff but the he's just taking advantage people. of it yeah exactly <laughs> so we he benefited we've, from it we figured it out guys we, we did it here <laughs> we figured out santa's method now on this podcast uh, i will so, work the list and i'll take my payment in milk and cookies oh yeah i would take my payment in milk and cookies depends on the cookies also depends on the milk that's true almond milk how do you get milk, milk from an almond? Milk from a goat milk? What's your favorite cookie? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> like what would that's Yeah, a, what would be a, if you were Santa, what cookie would you want them to leave you? Uh I do love I love soft cookies. I don't really like mm-hmm. the cookies that are like super hard and and chunky, I guess you can call yeah, them. Yeah, like almost uh, like brittle. Yeah, I love soft chocolate chip cookies. Like I I'm not a big fan of Chips Ahoy cookies. Mm-hmm. Too hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the soft cookie, so I like the chocolate chip cookie. I also like the oatmeal raisin, mm-hmm. snickerdoodle. Ooh. Um, and then if you want to just go based off of like what like name brand kind of style cookies, favorite cookie Oreo. Yeah, an Oreo cookie would be a good Oreo. I would go like a peanut butter chocolate chip, right? Of you course know, like you would have have a little bit of extra oomph in That's there. That's on Not brand. Just- yeah, it is on brand, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's me. That's what I would do. But uh, I feel like, uh, honestly, a place I got a cookie not that long ago was Sprouts. You know how, like, grocery stores, they have, like, that bin you never go to that have, like, donuts and cookies and stuff? And I'm just yeah. like, who's eating this? Well, I was a person who ate one of those. And Sprouts has a good cookie. Let me tell you. you. What? Sprites? Sprites. Sprouts, Sprites. Has, Sprouts has a lot of really good stuff. I actually love going to their deli and getting sandwiches mm. from there. I remember one time I got a uh, burger meat from there and it was a pre-made patty that had like cheese and stuff like on the inside of the patty. Yeah, Ooh. I got one of those. It had uh, oh. cheddar and jalapeno stuffed in it. Ooh, so good, boy. So good. <laughs> Loved it. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing that I was cracking up. They go to, so Santa and the little girl go to a CompuSmart store, which I guess stores in That's this fine. universe are open on Christmas Eve Christmas at 7.30, yeah. 8 p.m., which I don't think would actually happen. But she needs the best computer around, like the best computer on the market, right? And she says it has a 1.2 terabyte hard hard drive, which I'm like, okay, 2001, 1.2 terabytes is crazy. That is huge for them, yeah. Also, who's doing 1.2 terabytes? Like, it's like one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte, eight terabyte. Like, no one's having a hard drive. It's 1.2 terabyte. Like, Good point. That's a weird classification. But then... The storage space is like crazy. And then she goes, 512 megs of RAM. (laughs) Worst processor ever. (laughs) I got all this space. I can't do anything with it. (laughs) Right? I'm like, at 2001, like even crappy computers were still like at least a gigabyte or two of RAM. Uh, I don't know. I felt like that was a little later in the 2000s when we're starting getting into the one, two gigabytes of RAM. I mean, if you're going to have a storage space of a terabyte, I mean, you've got to have a better processor than that. Because she's saying True. this is top of the line. So she's saying 512 megabytes is top of the line processing power. They are not computing and rendering the Phantom Menace with 512 megabytes of processing power. I also didn't quite understand why she needed this fancy computer. Me neither. I had no idea. It's It, it comes down to, again, the whole Jurassic Park thing where it's like, it's a Linux-based system. Like, they want to make kids yeah. seem like they know what's going on with computers. Oh, she kids al- are always the hackers. Kids are the hackers. Look at she the al- kid in uh, Xenon 21st Century Girl. Well, she also mentions earlier to Santa, she's like, don't you have, like, a web address? And he's like, yeah, it's Santa Claus 2 at, G- at whatever.com. That's not a web address. That's an email. No. They're very yeah. different things. She was asking for an IP address, which I doubt Santa yeah. would even know. No. So I was cracking up. Also, like, we just are going to bl- gloss over the fact that Santa's driving a Tesla now. Like, no reindeer. He has, like, a computer functioning sleigh. 
Well, can we talk about how the reason why he has this computer slay is because there's a reindeer flu going around, which put all his reindeer incapacitated. Yet yeah. somehow the children, the, our main characters, their parents, I guess, are vets. They were called in for a reindeer flu? Yeah, that's super weird. Also, was this COVID-17? The reindeer? <laughs> I know, right? I, I, yeah. I, it's all I, preluding. So was the night did it first. Yeah, they they called it 20 years ahead of time. <laughs> um did they say that the parents were vets? I thought the parents were They didn't they didn't say that they're vets, but they get like the father gets the call first and he says, "Oh, you know, I'm getting called into work. It's the reindeer flu." And then, you know, the mom says, "Well, that sucks. It's Christmas Eve." And I was like, "It's going to suck for you too. It's they're calling everyone in." Oh, I thought it was a joke. Like they both were doctors who worked at a hospital and they meant that like, oh, it's flu season, like the reindeer flu or like everyone gets sick around this time. Which is what I thought as well until Santa arrived saying that he had to use this computer slave version because all the reindeers were out with a reindeer flu. I was like, yeah. is this the same flu that the parents are supposedly treating like home pets for? Yeah, that seems really weird because let's be honest, like vet who has are- reindeer yeah i was gonna say vets are not being called in to an emergency at night for a reindeer flu because like there's probably like 12 reindeer that exist on in christmas the whole Eve. planet you know <laughs> 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 so like that makes no sense whatsoever yeah yeah i didn't i honestly didn't hear what they said and i cared t- too little to rewind it and figure it out i was just like i think they're a doctor or something <laughs> well i watch things with subtitles ah uh, that's right you are a thinking man's person a thinking man's watcher yeah <laughs> i am the watcher you are the watcher who's watching the watcher uh, <laughs> that's the real question that is the real question over here so why does the little boy have the weirdest accent ever did you notice I, that he's like danny he's he almost reminds me of the little girls from the shining like play with us danny he actually did he had an accent which i never i bought right into it it didn't even dawn on me that like hey why does he have an accent and yet no one else in the family does yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know, he, like, spent a few years in England. <laughs> it was just, like, the producers, like, we just want someone to sound young. Well, it's funny. An accent. It's funny because this kid has no other acting credits than Twas the Night. So I'm really? assuming. None? Yeah, I'm it assuming. It was a one and was, done? It was a one and done. I'm assuming this was, like, the producer's kid or something is what I'm thinking. Oh, I could see that. I mean. Yeah. I think it's like some nepotism. There's like literally nothing about this kid on IMDb. It's like his name with no picture. And it says he was known for Twas the Night. And that's it. What was his name in the thing? Uh, Uh, I guess he's uh, Wrigley. Yeah. What's his? Peter. Peter. Yeah. Peter Wrigley. Peter Wrigley. Uh, What we didn't see in this movie is their heir to the Wrigley uh, gum fortune. Oh, I know. That's (laughs) what the real storyline would should have been. Yeah. How How they got all that gum money. Yeah, that gum, gum money, money over here. <laughs> um, have you ever heard someone in this day and age use the phrase a hot dog? What a hot dog. He's hot dogging. Uh, I've heard it in sports terminology, like in, in more in regards to basketball. But mm. outside of sports, even with probably within the last five years, no, I have not heard someone be referred to yeah. as a hot dog. I don't think I've ever heard someone say, wow, what a hot dog, even in sports. Like, I imagine, like, maybe Vince I've Scully would have said it. that. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, yeah. But, like, I'm, that's it. That's right like, down his alley. Yeah, yeah. You have to be at least 80 years or older <laughs> to be saying this phrase. It's like you, you say people are a hot dog, and whenever you get excited, you go, dynamite! Dynamite! Yeah, seriously. <laughs> um, I, another question I was thinking of. So this movie revolves a, r- a lot around tech, right? You know, 2001, it was a big time yeah. for kids' movies to be like, technology is super cool, and this A and lot that. of the Disney Channel original movies that came out around that time all had to do with tech. Yes, exactly. Like pixel perfect and mm-hmm. you know, all A that genius stuff. where the kid clones himself. Yes, exactly. Smart house. It's a smart house. Pretty the other me. The other me. Something to do with technology again. <laughs> I don't remember if that. I think one he had... clones himself or something. I don't know. Oh, was it? Oh, genius was the one where the kid pretends to be two different people. Yeah, the other a, me. He think he's actually a professor and he tries to be a high school student. That's right. Yeah, I got the two mixed up. I think they're the same kid who plays in both of them too, which is why I got them mixed Probably. up. Probably. But my question was, Santa has this little like fancy gadget, right? And we've now established it, it stops time, which is how he's able to get around the whole world and 
and do all these gifts. Like it stops time. Mm -hmm. It makes things bigger. It makes things smaller. He can carry more with him. How has he done it then for the past 300 years? Has he always had this little gadget that can do this? And if so, he's a criminal because we could have really used this gadget to stop uh, some pretty bad things from happening. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, well, he normally had his reindeer. We know that for sure. Yeah, I don't know how he would have done it without the gadget. I mean, whenever he complained about the technology, it always had to go back to the sleigh. It was never with his little ornament gadget mm -hmm. ball. So, yeah. so the way how long I... has he had that gadget? Well, the way I think about it is like in the uh, canon of Elf, right? You've never seen this movie, but Elf. Yeah, that's right. Everyone's freaking out now that you've never seen yes, this movie. Yes, that's true. I have never seen Elf, and the streak continues to this day. It goes on. To stop voting for Elf, people. Uh, in my defense, I am not a big Will Ferrell fan. I don't and think I any... that get, that gets everyone going, too. They're like, what? <laughs> what about Step Brothers? What about Talladega Nights? I was like, eh. I'll pass on all of them. I tell you what, I don't think people are actually Will Ferrell fans. I think that uh, it's like one of those things where you get in line, but you don't know what you're getting in line for. You just want to agree with the person in front of you. I feel like one person was like, Will Ferrell's cool. And then it just kind of s snowballed from there. <laughs> I don't know. There's uh, there's the Kragers of the world that <laughs> Ooh, love yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah, there are the Kragers of the world out there for sure. Uh, so my an elf, the the like whole. Uh, great in Wedding Crashers. Just that's true. He was good. He's good. Don't in give bit him his parts. own film. Yeah. yeah. Have him as a secondary role. He's excellent in that. Excellent there. Um, but in Elf. Anchorman was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and Anchorman was, it was funny. Uh, so in Elf, Santa used to be able to use all of his like sleigh and stuff with magic because people believe. And in modern days, people don't really believe anymore. Like kids are learning way earlier that he doesn't I feel exist. Like kids still believe in Santa. Well, what they're saying is less people believe and there's less Christmas uh. spirit in this day and age. So now Santa has to use technology in Elf rather than magic. I'm assuming what it's the same thing in this movie that maybe Santa used to be able to stop time and all this with just his magic Did himself. But now that people are less he's, likely to believe we're getting into the 21st the century. Yeah. You know, social justice warriors out there telling us we shouldn't be lying to our children and tell them about Santa right away. He's losing his magical abilities and all that. So he has to rely on technology now. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that's the reason why he has this stuff rather than, we really could have stopped World War II and the genocide of the Jewish community if we would have just had this magic ornament. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my other question is in, it's my final question here that I was thinking about. There's a lot of movies where S Santa is a thing, right? Like it's the whole, oh, Santa isn't real. And then Santa ends up being real. And then the end of the movie always has a part where like a gift shows up under the tree yeah, and it's from Santa and the parents are like, did you get that? No. Did you get that? No. And then they just kind of shrug it off. Like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> why? if that was me, I'd be like, who the hell broke in here? <laughs> what yeah. the where did this come from? <laughs> who got this? What is this? Yeah. Like they just always shrug it off. Like, I don't know, but who cares? It's a, it's signed by, who did it sign by again? I can't remember who he said. S Claus? No, no. I mean the guitar oh. that the guy got, oh. that Brian Cranston got. It was... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, some guy who plays guitar. Uh, uh, Chubby Checker. <laughs> Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton. Yeah, it was someone. It was someone. Yeah. They're just like, I don't know, but it's expensive and it's there, so I'm not going to question. It's kind of like if someone broke into your house and stole something, you'd be really pissed. But if someone broke in and just left the PS5, I'd be like, okay. I think I'm okay with this. You can, <laughs> right? You can break into my private space <laughs> if you're leaving stuff. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Come again. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's all I had. That's all I th my thoughts while I was watching this movie. <laughs> uh, one of the issues I had with the movie is I felt like a lot of the jokes they were trying to make just didn't land. Mm -hmm. Like I never, like I didn't, laugh too much at this where i feel like there's a lot of disney channel movies or at least i'll get a chuckle out of it that's I'm like, true ah, that's kind of dumb or that was funny that's a good one yeah either way but nothing like that really happened in this one it just kind of started and then it ended yeah like, Santa's well that was a movie <laughs> i feel like they were trying to make nick the comedic relief but like they were like hey can you play the dad from malcolm in the middle but like less interesting it's kind of what they yeah were seriously and then also, I feel like Santa was supposed to be a bit of comedic relief, but it he ended up seeming more like a dick to me than anything. 
Like, yeah, like I, I don't know. I didn't really like that Santa. I also wanted to know what Nick did as a child to put him on the naughty list for life. Seriously. Yeah, he couldn't have done anything that bad. There's no way. Well, I mean, there's that kid that shot all the, uh, that did the school shooting. I bet he's on the naughty list oh, for well, life. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that kid also, like, is either going to jail or something. Like, this he, Nick is still out there doing things, so. True. I, I mean. He's still scamming. He's still scamming. He's still conning people, you know. I mean, do you blame him? It's a father issue there. It was like a parent issue. Like they love the brother, but not him, which also unreliable narrator. Like maybe that's not actually how it happened, but that's how he perceived it to happen. But that's also a big theme in a lot of movies too. The one Mm -hmm. brother that's super successful. And then there's the other brother that's like scamming to try to show that they're better than the other brother. And it all comes crashing down and the successful brother has to save them or something. Yeah, don't you think that Nick would have had more money if he was actually a successful con artist? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I feel like... But then again, you're always on the run, I guess. That's true. Yeah, it's kind of like Catch Me If You Can. Had a lot of money, but couldn't do much with it at at a certain point. Hey, do you have a nickname for your laptop? Um, uh, Gertrude. (laughs) No, I have (laughs) not. I really don't. It's definitely not Lappy. I'm not a part of the Dora the Explorer universe. (laughs) definitely what that was from yeah <laughs> i'm the laptop i'm the laptop i'm the laptop i'm not <laughs> <laughs> oh man do you have a nickname for yours was that were you probing the question so i would ask it back <laughs> no i don't even have a laptop <laughs> oh that's true yeah no you're lappy way, you're way fancier than me you just have desky <laughs> yeah i got desky oh uh, all I right got- Mac mini Mac mini mini Mac <laughs> mini Mac. Oh, it's perfect. Mini Mac. Yeah. Uh, so like we were saying, this movie came out December 7th, 2001, like all good Disney channel original movies. It was filmed in Toronto. <laughs> like that was just kind of like home base. Yeah. Where they all filmed there. I'm pretty sure the, majority of the Megaplex was filmed there too. Right. Yeah. I, well, here's the thing. So like CW shows and WB shows were mostly filmed in Vancouver. I feel like Disney channel, like Canada mm. has really good tax breaks for filming, which is why a lot of people film in Canada. Drake. Yes. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Canada's Canada's favorite son, Drake. <laughs> It's either him or Justin Bieber. That's true. Yeah. It's ju- <laughs> Wait, is Justin Bieber Canadian? I'm pretty sure. Is he? I feel like that's right. Hang on. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Is Justin Bieber Canadian? Oh, just my- put an A at the end. I I hit A. I I just <laughs> went to my Safari and the last thing I looked up was Janko Jeans. <laughs> oh, from the nineties. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I had to show Madison what they were. She didn't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They were oh, yeah. interesting. Justin Bieber is Canadian. Get out of here, yeah. you alien. What are you doing? Why, why are we having him here in America? <laughs> eh? Eh? Uh, you want some maple syrup, eh? Uh, so what do you think this score has on Rotten Tomatoes? There's no critic score because it was never theatrically released, but audience score. 14? 37. What? That was not way as, higher than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, not as bad as you would think, huh? There's, I, I guess, for sure it was going to be way lower. There's some children. Critics off. would have given it a 14. Oh, yeah. The critics would have given it like a two. It would have been <laughs> real bad. Um, So this was directed by a guy named Nick Castle. He directed the Dennis the Menace live action movie in the 90s. He directed The Last Starfighter. You remember that movie? I think it had like no. uh, Ralph Macchio in it. And oh, I love Ralph Macchio. Speaking of, at the end of this month is oh, a yeah. new season of Cobra Kai. I'm so stoked. End of season three, like gave me goosebumps. It was oh yeah i can't wait for this new season in the air tonight and i'm not going to spoil it but they're playing in the air tonight and something crazy happens in the last scene it's like boy am i excited so yep. i'm excited but have you ever heard of this movie oh, were they Ka- eagle eagle thing dojo eagle thing yeah it was eagle thing <laughs> dojo <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> free they're like eagles don't have fangs it sounds cool okay <laughs> Um, so uh, Nick Castle directed a movie called Major Pain. Have you heard of that movie? I have with uh, one of the Waynes brothers, right? Yes. I think it's Damien Waynes, maybe. 
I honestly don't know which one is which. So here's what's funny is I I had never heard <laughs> Marlon, of this. Damien? I had never heard of this movie before. And like a few weeks ago, my coworker Devin told me that she loves this movie and showed me a trailer. I'm like, this movie looks so it looks terrible, stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the dumbest movie ever. But this never guy directed seen it, it. But interesting. Yeah, we, we might have to cover it on the podcast because that's what oh, we do. Oh jeez. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the kid who played Danny is a guy named Josh Zuckerman. And the reason why I, I was like, I recognize him from something. What do I recognize yeah, him from? Yeah, I did too, but I couldn't pinpoint it. You remember the movie Sex Drive? Yeah. He's he was the, the main, main character. character. <laughs> main guy. <laughs> he's in that. That's and he plays, funny. he plays young Dr. Evil in Austin Powers. Is... Like when they do really? the flashback to young Dr. Evil, he plays it. He's in oh, it for like two minutes. Oh, yeah. The one that minutes. gets the, uh, the cupcake thrown at his head. Yes. Who throws mm-hmm. a cupcake? Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> um. Sex drive. That's the one where they had to like he was like trying to meet some girl about his car. He stole yes. his brother's car. Stole his brother's car, who I think was Sean William Scott, possibly. I think possibly. Or someone who looks like Sean William Scott. And then him and the kid that was from the TV show Greek and was also in the last season of The Office were like the best friends in it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what else he was in. Well, there was a part where he's dressed up as a donut. I remember for some reason. Yep, <clears throat> and he old- keeps moving the mouth. Yes. The only reason I remember this movie is because I, I remember that either you bought it or I bought it and we watched it at your house and we bought it on DVD and it was the unrated version. And what made it unrated is that there was four minutes at the beginning where they introduced the movie and they're saying like, oh, oh you, yeah, remember that? They were like, you I think you bought the this. unrated edition and it would just be like a bunch of nudity or stupid stuff at it. But we wanted to give you actual good stuff. But while they're talking to you in the background, it's just a bunch of like naked dudes and girls just running around the whole time. Like, and it it's was, like that throughout the movie too. Oh yeah, they had scenes yeah, where they interposed like just like random walking. naked people in the background that weren't in the theatrical movie. <laughs> it was so weird. It was hilarious. Like that was such a funny thing. That's all I remember about that movie. <laughs> it's like a sad moment. It's just like, hey, boobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was gr- <laughs> it was great. It was great. Um, okay, so the biggest name in this movie, we've talked about it, Brian Cranston. He plays Uncle Nick. He's best known for voicing Snizzard in the Power Rangers. He's best known for playing the voice of Fei Long in Street Fighter II, the animated movie. And he's also best known for playing a dentist who has sex on Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) That's true. Those are the uh, only things he's known for. Those three things. Nothing else. Nothing else. He was a dentist who became Jewish just for the jokes. Yep, exactly. (laughs) I actually, I totally forgot that he voiced like some random uh, villains in the Power Rangers movie. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Yeah. So remember in the most recent Power Rangers movie, he played. Um, yeah, because uh, I watched Zor- it. Yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, he played Zordon in the most recent Power Rangers movies. And during a press junket, he told him, he's like, it's kind of like a like a full circle for me, because one of the first things he did in Hollywood was he voiced some villains in the Power Rangers TV show, TV the first show. season. Interesting. Yeah, so that's kind of funny. I had no idea he voiced Fei Long in Street Fighter 2. <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And of course, um, there's Malcolm in the Middle. That was probably his yeah. biggest thing before this. Malcolm in the Middle is when he got big, and then I think that Breaking Bad is when he became a household name. Broke the name. stratosphere. Yes, yeah, that was like a whole other level. And then the final person I want to mention here is Barclay Hope. He plays the dad. Uh, he was in Upload in that uh tv show i think he's one of the Mm -hmm. people who lives in the afterlife thing which by the way how has that not had a second season yet it's supposed to i just don't know when it's coming out that show has been out for a while now and that first season was so good well uh, i think one it's amazon so who knows what their schedule is like two covid might have shut things down for a bit and three isn't robbie amell lead on something else right now so maybe he has some like scheduling conflicts oh i don't know possibly yeah Still, Possibly. Upload needs to come back. That show was great. I agree. Amazing. It was like uh, a, a, I would say a, I don't want to say a more um, approachable version of Black Mirror, but it's kind of like a more approachable version of Black Mirror. Yeah, less, not as like weird. Definitely more, more comedy aspect more bl- to it. Dark more dark comedy to it. Yeah. 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 We don't want this to become your next uh, Everything Sucks. No. No. Um, so also Barclay Hope was in Goosebumps as well. He played a character in an episode of Goosebumps. And so I thought I'd mention him there. Yeah. So Joe, my only fun fact Jordan. that I could find. The only one. The only one anywhere on the internet I could find is that the 
controller he used on the sleigh was a Logitech something, something, something controller. Big freaking whoop, right? Yep. Although that video game he was playing was like the most boring video game I've ever seen in the world. Like it was oh, yeah. just sky and that was it. <laughs> just like I'm flying in sky. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty lame. Yeah, pretty, pretty lame. Did uh, stories like Best Buy just have like computers? Do they have computer setup that you can just kind of like roam the Internet on their most powerful computer? No, I don't think so. Like, I don't know where where she's plugging this cat five cable into. I have no idea that she's getting onto the Internet with on this computer in Compu smart. I have no idea. Because I don't think they do that. Although now they have Wi-Fi, so I'm sure they're hooked up to Wi-Fi. But back in the day, I don't oh, yeah, think they were hooked true, up to the true. internet. Hmm. I have no idea, though. Here, let's go back. Let me call 2001 Jordan. Hey, 2001 Jordan. Hi. How's SpongeBob? <laughs> how's SpongeBob? How's the second, <laughs> how's the second season of SpongeBob? <laughs> All right, so that's a Twas the Night. Um Sucks for Craig and Cam that they had to watch this movie and don't get to talk about it at all. <laughs> I know. I don't but, know. I don't think I'll be revisiting this one. Yeah. Uh, so the reason that Cam wasn't on is because uh, he double clicked the virus icon on his computer and it shut down the internet in his area. Yep. <laughs> 50, 50 mile miles. radius. Yep. 50 mile radius of his area. It shut him down just right now. So yep. he couldn't get on. He's in a blackout right now. He's in a blackout. Um, so, Joe, any last thoughts on this movie? Uh, yeah. If you're interested in watching it, you could probably just skip it. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. I I definitely second that. The eyes have it, you know. <laughs> I would, honestly, I we haven't watched the ultimate Christmas present or the ultimate present or whatever, but I remember that one being better than this one. I also remember not exactly liking that one or just thinking ah. I was like, eh, I didn't like it's whatever. I don't know. I, re- I remember not being a big fan of that one. I remember thinking it was cool, but I think I'm actually getting that one mixed up with Up, Up, and Away. <laughs> oh, about I would it. love to watch Up, Up, and Away. Yeah, Up, Up, and Away. Who wouldn't would want to see uh, superheroes with foil as their kryptonite? Foil, foil as their foil? Foil as their foil. Yep, that's what it is. All right, guys. <laughs> go check out wreckmypodcast.com where you can find our Redbubble store, our Instagram, our YouTube. Also, a link to our Patreon where you can go and give us money every month and we'll give you one extra episode a month as well as put you into a raffle where you can win some fun pop culture stuff. Plus, it really helps us out. Keeps the lights on over here. Uh, hey, that all, episode will be coming out soon. It will be coming out soon. Um, not quite sure what it's going to be on yet, but it will be coming out soon. And then, uh, but if you don't want to give us money, go give us a rating or a review. Those are always appreciated. Uh, I would love to get a, actually, you know what? Leave us a review. So so Elite Eight Showdown has been asking their listeners to leave an Elite Eight Showdown review on a different podcast. I'm going to ask you the same thing. I want to see if our listeners- Why are they so weird? (laughs) They're so weird, but I think that would be so- So (laughs) go listen to Elite Eight Showdown and then put their review on our podcast- (laughs) And I'll relay it to them. <laughs> it's called networking. <laughs> First, they wanted 50, what, five star reviews. Now they star want reviews. reviews on other podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're just, they're doing weird stuff over there. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. They push the, uh, the slow down button on that special ornament one too many times. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, jingle, jingle, jingle. Ho, ho, ho. We'll see you all later. Oh, Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Wreck my podcast Wreck my podcast did they build this? Because uh, I was thinking while watching this, I wonder if they build it as like, and uh, what the heck is his name? Cranston from Malcolm in the Middle. Brian. No, they didn't. They didn't bill him as anything. I don't think because like it, the only trailer you're probably going to find is a commercial, like a 30 second commercial from the Disney Channel. True. And also, no, he would have been doing Malcolm in the Middle in 2001. I think it started around the same time. I thought it was in. I thought it started in the nineties. Here it is, T- no, two thousand four promo. It is. Oh, Malcolm in the Middle's Brian Cranston stars. Well, there you go. <laughs>
because that was all he was known for back then, right? <laughs> yep. Actually, uh, I think he had done stuff before that, just he wasn't as big of a name as he was now. Like, I feel like Breaking Bad really kind of put him on the map. No, um, the friend of Lewis, the guy. I don't remember what the friend looks like. Uh, he kind of looks like AG. your stereotypical um, early 2000s Disney teenagers. Kind of got like the long, like flowy Sean Hunter hair. Oh, um, yes. I remember him now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I forgot about the nerd guy, too. There was like the really nerdy looking kid. What, in You Wish? No, in uh, Even Stevens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like the Minkus. Yes, he looks like Minkus. <laughs> that was just like the stereotypical role, the Minkus. <laughs> yes. Minkus. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like I totally forgot Newman. about his friend. Yeah. Newman. <laughs> Dinkelberg. <laughs> That's in a lot of shows. It really is in a lot of shows. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i originally i watched the movie the mist i watched that on like a bootleg version my very first time ever seeing it where it was like only half the screen was showing up and <laughs> it was pretty bad that's how i watched um the underworld series on Ooh. very pixelated bootleg video pixelated werewolves <laughs> seriously hey, you know what i just found out too hmm there is a lightsaber fighting academy here in Santa Clarita. Ooh, that's fun. Do they do they practice in the park? They do. <laughs> nice. At night, you see all nice. the lightsabers lit up. Which park do they uh, do it at? Uh, Old Orchard Park, where um, Old Orchard. across from where I used to live in Newhall. Oh, the big one off of Lions there. Yeah. Nice, nice. That, that's so funny. <laughs> I would totally do that. Well, have you watched Hawkeye yet? Oh, I've already contacted them. I was like, what's the, what's the deets? So yeah. Give me the info. <laughs> right, I want to do it. And there's a Hawkeye episode where he actually goes to a LARPing area and has to like yeah, battle people. I saw that. Yeah. It's pretty his, funny. Uh, Ronin suit back. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty funny. I like that. Oh, you know, right. actually, I'm, I'm liking the Hawkeye show. I haven't. Oh, I think seen, it's I'm, great. I think I've only seen the first two episodes, but I enjoyed them. Yeah. I think it's great. It's, it's nothing like innovative or anything but it's just solid solid stuff and then we got book of boba fett coming out soon oh yeah we do i can't wait for that christmas eve or christmas day uh christmas oh. uh it's either the 24th or the 26th i think it's the 24th what hang on hang on i gotta watch this trailer it's called twas the night but let me but it's the horror version <laughs> I honestly think that's what it is. Ooh. Santa kills everyone. Oh, classic. Is Santa played by Bill Goldberg, though? That's A that's... dark comedy of an untold Christmas story. A vengeful Santa orders his assistant to kill some bothersome kids, but ends up getting the shaft himself. Ooh. He gets the Paris Hilton treatment from House this of Wax. This totally looks like it would be some like B-rated porno. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like a little porn with their horror film, right? <laughs> they just go hand in hand. Christmas, horror, porn, it all goes together. Break my podcast.